Good evening, brothers and sisters. I hope this video find you doing well. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God so much for all that God has done, God is doing, and God is going to do. We are just so excited um, on the things that, that took place this past Sunday. Uh, we had a good word from, from Bishop Jordan, and also we had, we had seven to come. Um, possibly eight to be baptized on next Sunday, but we had seven to come either to rededicate their, their lives to the Lord or to give their lives to Christ. So we are just so thankful and we are excited about what God is doing out there in the country. Amen. Bringing folks to him. And as Jesus says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And we thank God for that. And another shout is that all of them were young. All of them were um, under 30 years old, and we, we are just so, so excited about that. They were, they were, um, we're just so excited about that. We just put it that way. Um, and just thank God for what he's doing. Thank God for his Holy Spirit that who still, who still reigns. We thank God. We thank him for that. Amen. There is a word um, from the Lord that uh, we want to give today that God laid on our heart to share with with each of you and with all of us i'll put it that way amen but before we get into our word i ask that you join me in a word of prayer and and as always i ask you know prayer is much needed in the church and in the body of christ and in this world we know about the things that are happening in israel at this time we need to pray and keep praying Amen. Amen. So join me, if you will, in the word of prayer. Dear Father, we come in the name of Jesus, thanking you for being so good to us. Thanking you for your grace, your mercy. Thanking you for looking beyond all of our faults and seeing our needs. Lord, it's it's another day that that you've given us. Thank you for keeping us this day throughout the day out of all the things that could have happened. Father, you kept us and you kept things at bay. And we thank you for it. Now, Father, we ask that you you allow your word to come forth. You allow your word to accomplish what it sets out to do. Father, we ask that you touch the hearts and minds of your people, that they be receptive to your word. And I ask that you allow me to continue to be used as a mouthpiece for you to to expound on your word and to to deliver your word, to make it applicable to our daily lives. Thank you for this ministry that you've given here. And we ask that you continue to bless all ministry that you have planted in your name. These and other blessings we ask in our son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our word for today is found in the book of Acts. Um, the book of Acts, the 10th chapter, uh, the 34th through the 35th verses, 34th and 35th verses of Acts 10 chapter, kind of piggyback on something mentioned in Sunday school on Sunday and also go along with a little bit of what we're going to look at on this Sunday in Sunday school in Sunday school. So Acts 10 chapter 34, 35, and it reads as follows. Then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is, is accepted with him. Amen. Amen. And we'd like to speak to you from a thought today. God doesn't show favoritism. God doesn't show favoritism. Amen. Um, in ancient times, the, the focus of God's redemptive concern for the people of earth um, kept getting narrower because of sin. At first, the focus was on Adam and the, the whole human race. And when Cain killed Abel, God excluded the line of Cain and narrowed his focus to the line of Adam's son, Seth. And then when there was an increase in sin in the world, the Bible says that that God excluded everyone except those in the line of Seth's descendant, who was Noah. And later, his focus narrowed to, to Noah's descendant, Abraham, and the Israelites. And when the sin of the, uh, of the Israelites caused Israel to, to split up, um, and the sin of the northern kingdom 
of Israel led to their conquest and their deportation by the Assyrians, then God's focus narrowed even more to the southern kingdom of Judah Benjamin. And finally, his redemptive focus centered on the remnant of Judah that returned from the Babylonian captivity. A Amen. And then giving this narrowing focus, given this favoritism for the remnant of Judah, one can see why the early Jewish Christians thought that the great salvation that we have in Christ Jesus was also limited to the Jewish people only. You can understand why they, they felt that they were God's chosen people because the scrolls had talked about the Messiah coming to the Jews, the king of the Jews coming in and him ruling the world. And they felt they were God's special people. Limited salvation was only to them. And it took a major revelation to correct them of this notion of them being a, um, exclusive and being the only ones who would receive salvation. What had to happen? Well, the apostle Peter was given a spectacular vision that in short showed him and the church as a whole that the narrowing process had been ended and God's redemptive focus had been enlarged. What are you talking about? Well, this takes us to the lesson for today. In Acts 10, what was going on in Acts chapter 10? The Bible says that Peter had gone to a city called Joppa and he was staying with a man called Simon, Simon the Tanner. And and one day Peter went on the rooftop. And the Bible says that that God put him in a trance. And and when he was in a trance, he, he saw a vision of a a vessel that was a four cornered vessel that was lowered down from from heaven. And and on that vessel, there were all kind of beasts and wild beasts uh, of the uh, of the world and, and different fowls of the air. And there was a voice that came down when Peter saw this vessel that said, rise up, slay and eat. And Peter said, no, Lord, anything that uh, he said, I've never eaten anything that's common or unclean. And then a voice came to him uh, from the Lord and said, all that I've made is not common. And this happened to him two more times. So three times this happened when the voice said, get up, slay and eat. And Peter said, no, I've never eaten anything common or unclean. And then God will tell him that anything he made is not common or unclean. A amen. So when Peter was coming out of his trance or, or what previously had happened, God had visited a man by the name of Cornelius, who was a Gentile. A amen. And he, he, he was a, a centurion. And, but he loved God. He was a, a he, he loved God and God had sent the angel to him and told him to send to Joppa and look for a man by the name of Peter. Oh, and, and, and when and they had did that and it was so simultaneous how how God's timing works. When Peter was coming out of his trance, those servants that he sent were standing at the gate calling for him. And the Holy Spirit quickened in Peter and told him to go with them because he had sent them. The Bible says that Peter went with them on the following day. And when he came to Cornelius's house and when Cornelius saw Peter, he went and he bowed himself to Peter and he began to worship. And Peter said, "Uh, uh get up. <laughs> for I'm a man just like you are. A amen. He said, now he said, he said, God or the Holy Spirit has told me to come to you. And, and what can I do for you? And, and when Cornelius took him in this room, Cornelius had all of his, his family and friends around because Cornelius wanted them to hear what thus saith the Lord. And see, and this is how we should be when, when we have, when we know a family and friends and we know that the good news of the Lord is somewhere, we should invite them to come to church, come to, to, to a meeting, come to Bible study, that they may hear a word, a word of life, the bread of life being given to them, to share with them that can change their lives. And Peter said, when he saw this crowd, he said, now, you know, it's not lawful 
for for a Jew to dwell with somebody or to deal with somebody of another nation. But he said, I feel that God has ordained this. I know that this is of God. So so I'm coming here to share a word with you. And the Bible says that when Peter began to expound upon Jesus Christ and tell Cornelius that there was something more, there was something greater that has come other than the law. And he started telling them about Jesus Christ. And, and while he was preaching, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit fell in that place. And when the Holy Spirit fell in that place, those, those Gentiles, the Cornelius and his family and, and all of those who heard the words of Peter said, when the Holy Spirit fell in that place, they began began to speak in tongues and those folks who were with Peter, those Jews, the ones of the circumcision, when they saw that they were speaking in tongues, they said that, oh my goodness, the Gentiles have now received the Holy Ghost and salvation. And Peter said, now, since they have received the Holy Ghost, who can forbid water from them or who can forbid them from being baptized since salvation is now come to the Gentiles? And, and as our verses said today and they indicate, Peter saw that Jesus Christ had definitely overcome sin and the devil and made possible the enlargement of God's redemptive concern. In other words, God now says salvation is not for the Jews only, but it's for everybody. And those who may have been unclean and accepted before were now able to receive salvation. Heathens and sinners could now come to Jesus and be saved. Woo, I wish I had a church in here. Boy, we don't know when to get excited because in our present dispensation, God no longer shows favoritism to any particular group of people. The Apostle Paul puts it this way in Galatians 3 and 28. He said, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Paul's point is not in not that these distinctions no matter no longer exist because any person with any good sense knows that their differences among people and they are real. But Paul was getting us to see that, the, that these individual differences are not significant when it comes to our salvation, because salvation is not limited to the Jews. It's not limited to males or to the free or to the white people or to the educated or to the Baptist or to the Pentecostal or the church of, uh, of God in Christ. All may come before God in the name of Jesus. And it's so sad that some people think that they have they have more access to Jesus because of their race or their nationality or their gender or their denomination. A Amen. When Christ died on the cross, when he died on Calvary's hill, the Bible says that the veil in the temple was rent, not from bottom to top, but from top to bottom, which signifies that. That God did this. And when the veil in the temple was rent, it was rent from top to bottom and it gave access from just the holy place into the holy of holies, which meant that God was giving us access to himself and everybody could come to him. But we had to come through Jesus Christ. And that shows us that God does not have favorites. God don't show favoritism. Amen. It, it follows from from all this, therefore, that we may not limit the reach of the gospel message for the offer of salvation for the offer of salvation has been extended by God himself to all and, and everybody who will receive it. The liar can receive salvation. The prostitute can receive salvation. A amen. The gambler can receive salvation. The adulterer can receive salvation. The, the Mexican, the, the Chinese, the Russian can receive salvation. The black man and white man can receive salvation. The homosexual can receive salvation. The pedophile can receive salvation. The rich, the poor, the murderer can receive salvation. The Muslim and Buddhist can receive salvation. And get this, get this, get this one now. Even you and I, with our judgmental and hypocritical selves can receive 
salvation. I know I slipped you a Mickey that time because you wasn't expecting that. Everybody can receive salvation because God doesn't have favoritism, doesn't have favorites and don't show favoritism when it comes to salvation. Peter, say, uh, Peter says that he, God, he knows now that God is no respecter of person. God don't care who you are, where you come from, who your mama and dad he was, who your pastor is. God does not care what color you are. God doesn't care what gender you are. God just says, as Jesus told Peter when he was walking on the water, come. And Jesus says, if you come unto me, he said, I will give you rest. A Amen. Salvation is for everybody. And God doesn't have any favorites. Salvation has been extended to everybody. <laughs> Amen. Jesus says, he told Nicodemus in John 3 and 16, he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That whosoever, and I said this in Sunday school, he said, whosoever. Believe it. He did not say Jew so ever, which means that he's not only talking to the Jews, but he's talking about anybody who would consider themselves a who. And that's considered for all mankind. Jesus says this. God sent him into the world, not just for the Jews only, but for anybody who would believe on him. Paul picks it up in Romans 10 and 9 and said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shall be saved. Thou shall be saved. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, if you accept him as your Lord and your Savior and believe that he died and rose again on that third day. If you believe that in your heart, he said, you shall be saved. He said, you shall be saved. There's a possibility that you can be saved, but there are other works that you have to do. You have to have faith from from then on until the end of your work, to the end of life that you have to hold on to his grace, grace and have faith in his grace. And that faith will cause you to do works. Amen. And God doesn't show favoritism. I don't care what your title is. You're not any more favorite to God than the next person. Amen. One day, one day we're going to talk about God's favor because so, so many people say the favor of God is on me. The favor of God doesn't, doesn't mean that things are going to be good for you all the time because the favor of God can send you through hell <laughs> and high water. Amen. But because you're favored, God will let you go through that. To show because you can go through it. That's also God's favor. We will talk about that. But God doesn't have favorites in his kingdom. Whosoever will, let him come. Amen. Don't ever think, I don't care what your lot in life, whether you're rich, poor, whatever your color is, your socioeconomic status. Um, I, I, I don't care. Your denomination don't. It doesn't even matter to God. It doesn't even matter to God. But if you come to Jesus confessing that he is Lord of all and your savior and believing that God raised him from the dead, you can be saved. Amen. I'm so glad God is not like God like God is not like us because us. We we have a habit of wanting to hook certain folk up because we have favorites, even Parents with a lot of children, they they don't want to admit I love all of them the same. But no, you don't. <laughs> you you have favor. You have a favorite that that one that stands out. But with God, all of us, all of us are his children on the same level. Amen. Amen. We hope that you've you've obtained something out of the lesson. I hope that this word has been encouraging to those who feel that that I don't matter in the kingdom. Yes, you do. You matter. You matter to God. You are important to God. As God is important to you, you are important to God. You matter. God might not have called you to do what somebody else did, but you matter. Amen. He loves you just as much as the next person. He loves you because God doesn't have 
favorites. God does not show favoritism. Amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in with us and thank you for the support that you've given us over the years. We just praise God for uh, for all that you do and have done um, to to help this ministry and to help this ministry grow even more. And as I said, God is bringing folks in and we just so thankful for that. Amen. And if you ever find yourself in the Blarney area of, of Baxley, amen, it's it's up um, U.S. It's up U.S. one north um, from Baxley, about five, six miles away from Baxley, but still considered Baxley. It's a little community called Blarney. Come on out and share with us. Amen. Sunday school starts at 10 a.m. every Sunday morning and at 1115, between 1115, 1130 morning worship will begin. We'll begin with either devotion, praise and worship, however the spirit um, leads us to do on that particular day. Amen. And then following and then, then you know, we, we, we all we love the word of God. We, we praise, we worship. But there's nothing more important than the word of God that will come and God will give it to us. And we thank God for that. Amen. So you are welcome. Come on out and join us. And if you would like to um, sow a seed into this ministry. And, and I like to, you know, get that straight. We're not begging. We're not saying that, oh, boy, you're going to get a new house, new car. No, no, you are sowing a seed because you are receiving and you feel that you've received and you're moved to give. That's what I'm asking. If you want to sow a seed in this ministry, you are more than welcome to give. I know that you may tithe in, in your house of worship that you go every Sunday, but this, this ministry may have been blessing you with what God has given you and you want to bless it. So you are more than welcome with a personal check, cashier's check, a money order, um, and send it to and mail it to the address at the bottom of the screen as Mizpah Baptist Church, Post Office Box 1275, Baxley, Georgia, 31515. Amen. Continue to pray for everybody. Amen. Sickness is all around us. Death is all around us. Wars and rumors of wars, as Jesus says in Matthew 24, all around us. So continue to pray for yourself. Pray for each other. Pray for the church. Pray for um, this nation. Pray for the world. Amen. Um, all this stuff is happening. And we see that the days, the day of Christ is approaching because Jesus says these things will happen and these things will come. So pray, pray, pray. Amen. I got to get out of here. Um, um, stay safe. Stay safe. Um, COVID is all around us. So wear your mask. If you have to wear your mask, just be safe. Keep your eyes open for all this other stuff that's out there. Amen. Amen. I love you and I want to keep seeing you. <laughs> I want to keep seeing you um, in, in church and in the community. So uh, stay safe. And I'm getting out of here. I love you. Pray for me. Call me out by name as I, I pray for you collectively and individual, individually if need be. So we going to get out of here and we hope to see you on Sunday. We're looking forward to see you on Sunday. Baptism starts at nine o'clock and you're more than welcome to come and be a part of that in that service as well. So we will see you on Sunday if it's God's will and the creek doesn't rise. So until then, so long.